Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about Ikea's retro resurgence because you guys, Ikea has gone crazy, okay? Ikea has gone completely off the deep end. They have some crazy new styles coming out that are very, very retro. You know, this is really fascinating to me because this collection is like squarely targeted towards the Gen Zs. And I talk a lot about Gen Z style and postmodernism and the rise of the 70s and retro stuff all the time. And I think people go like, I see in the comment section, people are like, are people actually doing this in their home? Like, is this actually popular? And I always say, trends are a funny thing. You think they're stupid and a lot of them are, but they do start to show up in retailers and they do start to kind of, you see the products that come out, the new stuff does sort of lean into these sort of new trends. So yeah, you're starting to see a mainstream retailer like Ikea. You don't get much more mainstream in the furniture world than Ikea. It's everywhere all around the world. And you're seeing so much of this stuff coming in. Very popular with the young folks. And um, let's have fun with this collection. This is gonna be a long video. It's a lot of products to go through you guys. So grab a glass of wine or a coffee. I don't judge. I don't care what time of day it is. You just do what you need to do because we got a lot to talk about. So first of all, I will say this. It's divided into two parts, this video, okay? You've got the like, there's a new collection that Ikea's come out with that's brand new. And then there's a bunch of not other stuff under this other new collection that is retro, meaning it's like re-releases of stuff that Ikea did in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s. So a little second half of the video is like trip down memory lane. The first video is like this cohesive collection that is also works well because it's very retro inspired, okay? And it's called the Tessimans. I will also say, by the way, I will not pronounce any of the, the Swedish correctly, okay? I Someone, you, some people get really angry that I don't take the time to learn Swedish. Never a Swedish person, by the way, they do not care. But like, there's always someone who gets really angry. They think they're on like the New York Times and that I should have like fact check and I should have like a Swedish person on staff in order to translate for me. I do not. So no, I will not be and I, I don't I don't care quite frankly. So let's talk about the Tessimans, okay? So first up, we've got this side table which is made of a metal construction. It's in this sort of burnt orange which I think is such, such a hot color. I think I said in my like color of the year video that I thought like when looking at color trends, this is a color that I see coming up so often. It's like a burnt orange, sort of rusty red. I see this everywhere. I think red has been really trending in interior design now for a good year or so. Green was super popular for a few years. It still is, but you're seeing so much of this sort of burnt orangey reddy color. Not necessarily what the paint brands picked as color of the year, but I'm seeing this very much in this collection. I like this one. It's kind of interesting. I think that the like, the sort of wavy sort of detail on the base of this storage bin, I think is cool. It does feel a little ruffly for me. Like it does resemble ruffles, which I don't love, but so it kind of feels like it's skirted, but it's actually in metal, which is kind of interesting, right? It feels a little bit cool. It's a very bold color. That color is really popular, as I said. I think it's kind of neat. I mean, would I pick it? No. Would it work for my style? No. But again, like I say on this channel, just because it's not my style doesn't mean I can't appreciate it. We can all, we're allowed to like different things. You know, I think it's kind of cool. I like that it's hidden storage. I think hidden storage is like so underrated. I love for furniture pieces to do double duty as like a storage item while also being cool and also doubling as a tray so this can be like a side table it's also a decorative piece but it's also an organization piece i love that it's doing sort of a few different things there i think it's a cool little tray i like that it's metal you're seeing a lot of metal being done at ikea right now this makes sense for them because it's quite affordable while also being kind of an interesting material and a cool sort of construction material that you usually see because a lot of you know like trendy contemporary design. It's just expensive. Like say, you know, natural stone, generally quite expensive. You're not gonna see a ton of that at Ikea, but metal is sort of a material that's really popular right now. You know, we see it in, in table lamps and floor, you know, all sorts of things. And you know, seeing it here makes sense because it's affordable at the same time. So I like this one, I think it's cool. Okay, next up is this clock. Everything, by the way, is under the Tessimans brand until I tell you otherwise, okay? So if you're looking for this at Ikea, that's what, that's the thing. This isn't a clock. This is a woefully impractical clock. It's as impractical as having a concrete clock in your living room that is perpetually at 1218 because you don't change the battery. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't like this one. I think it's a bit of a skip. But again, if you like that sort of analogous blue, pinky, purpley sort of color scheme, then I guess this might work for you. But it's obviously impractical as a clock. Like it's obviously a really stupid clock. But everybody's got clocks on their phone now. So like, who cares anyway? Like you're not really actually using it as a clock anyway. It's a decorative piece, so let's be honest. I don't particularly like this one, but you know, again, it's kind of cool. And I think this will be popular amongst the youngins. Okay, next up is going to be this sort of interesting metal utility cart. So again, like this is all about color. This is like, you got the bright yellow with the bright orange, right? You're seeing lots and lots of color. And that's what you're going to see throughout this retro collection. Trust me, if you are a neutral girly, this is not, not your collection. I'm here to tell you. But 
you probably knew that because you probably saw how things were trending, you know, and I get it. Look, look at my background. Like, you know, do you see any bright purple? No, I just, I'm not, I like color. I appreciate color. Don't always love it all the time in my house. And this is a bold pop of color that isn't for me, but this is the trend that things are headed in, right? This is, you know, as I said in previous videos, I'm always showing big, bright, bold spaces, unapologetic use of color. I love to see it, not for me, but I do love to see it. It is kind of cool sometimes. This is a really good example. You're gonna see that throughout this collection. I think it's a cool little storage unit that also, again, kind of plays, you know, does a, a double duty. You can use it for organization. It's a little bit of an open unit. So obviously it's styled really beautiful in this photo, but it's probably, you know, like just don't have a bunch of crap on it and you'll probably be okay with this one. Okay, next up is this throw. Mm. This one is a miss for me. I think it's the colors don't really work necessarily for me. This is a very similar color palette to that clock that we talked about. I find this one to be not sort of my palette, but again, this like pastel purple and pink has been very popular in design, sort of retro inspired design. And you see this very, you know, commonly used in sort of Gen Z uh, design style that seems to be moving in this kind of weird postmodern colorful world that they seem to be loving. I also don't love the uh, use of mixed pattern. I just don't really like that. I think it would have been better if it just sort of stuck to a pattern and a color and then ran with it. But that's just me. I'm not a massive pattern guy, but I also just think that I don't like this. Because again, sometimes like there's, I don't like this, but it's not my style, but that's okay. And sometimes it's, I don't like this because it's not good. This would, for me, is the latter. Okay, next up, it's, let's talk about this cute little lamp. This is the lamp that honestly inspired this video because I saw this lamp popping up so often on TikTok. So this is again, kind of in that same sort of collection, everything's sort of in this orangey, purpley sort of kind of color scheme with some yellow in there, right? Like this is kind of gonna be for the whole collection. This one is cool, I'll be honest. I like the fact that it's a metal shade. At first when I saw it, I was like, don't be plastic, don't be plastic. And it's not, it's metal. And I'm actually really pleased with that. I like that it's metal. I think that makes sense. I think the base, it's a, I, you know, I think, I had a lamp in 1995 from Ikea that basically was this. I wouldn't be surprised if Ikea just ch chucked it in a warehouse for like, 25 years, 30 years, or whatever, and just like left it in there. and was like, mm, this'll come back around. And they were right, it eventually did. It's really like, it just, it's probably a little flimsy if I remember it correctly. I'm trying to remember what it was like in 95 and it was pretty flimsy then. So I imagine it still is now. It's fine. I think this lamp's like 18 bucks or something. What is it, $18 US? I mean, come on. With, you know, with a metal shade. I mean, you know, that's, that's an amazing price for this little lamp. So that's kind of really cool. I think it's a super cute little lamp. I'll also say this, if it gets people using like table lamps, I'm all for it. You know, like if you're using table lamps, if you're using more lighting, if you're using softer lighting, glow, little, you know, if you've got a variable lighting plan in your space rather than just relying on that one light in the center of the room, I'm all for it. I think this is also really key that a lot of people are sort of tapped into now. This to me isn't a trend though. This is just good design. Like having a, a, a lighting plan that isn't just having one light that's sort of creating that down light in the whole room, creating all these shadows amongst everybody, making everybody look sick and gross. To me, this is just like good design. It's not necessarily a trend. So if it gets people using interesting lamps so that people can, you know, see them around their space and people can look better and their rooms can look better, then I'm all for it. The other one, by the way, that is not, I didn't want to, it's not part of this collection, is this donut lamp. I don't know if you guys have seen that. This is all over TikTok as well. This has now been around for quite a while now, several months. This one is super popular. This is everywhere. I like this one too. I think this, I'm, I'm tempted by this one. I think it's cool. I'll be honest though, when it's, a lot of people hang it on their wall and the cord really bugs me, but as a table lamp, I think it's really, really cute. Also, it's kind of idiot proof, right? Because it's like golden yellow. So no matter what daylight bulb you throw in there, because we all know you're still using those daylight bulbs, even though I told you not to, or those white, like those bright white lights that just are meant for a garage and people just put them in their living room. This donut lamp, I feel like is idiot proof because you could throw that in here and it would still look good because it's got this warm glow coming from this orange amber glass that they used. So kudos for that. It's, you know, it's gonna get some, some warmth and some life kind of coming into people's spaces. So, you know, Ikea is really killing it with the lamp. Lamps. I will say, yeah, this table lamp is a cool one. I think the donut one is better in my opinion, but I think this little cool little one is also neat too. And for $18, I mean, come on now. Okay, the continuing also, by the way, we have to acknowledge that a lot of this is super 70s inspired. And to me, this glassware is like the epitome of that. The amber sort of glass, not only are we seeing it in the decor, we're seeing it in that, you know, that side table we saw earlier, we're seeing it in that lamp, right? We're also seeing it in glassware. This is also something that's been trending for a while. It's this amber glass, very 70s inspired. I think these are really cute. I think these are really cute. 
cute. I'm surprised it took Ikea this long to come out with them. They also have this sort of lavender colored sort of, I guess, a um, water pitcher or whatever. So again, that pastel purpley pinky color that I'm less of a fan of, but a lot of people seem to really love it. It seems to be really popular. Are you guys getting how colorful this collection is? Can we talk about the fact that like, Ikea has been like so absent in the color game for like so long because design for so long has been so neutral that some of these pieces are just like so colorful. It really just goes to show how design is shifting because just when you see all these images, right? Like, doesn't it really strike you how colorful design is getting? Some people love that, some people don't. That's cool, doesn't matter. You know, you like what you like and that's okay. But um, yeah, I don't love the lavender picture, but again, it's different than, you know, the usual pictures that we see from Ikea, which is the clear corkin that everybody's had for a hundred years. I like this amber glassware though. I think it's really cool. Okay, and then last up, we've got this like, I'm gonna call it like a children's mobile thing that goes over top of a crib, like, because that's what this looks like. They, they say it's not that, and it's probably not meant for children, but it looks like it is. Are these wind chimes? I don't think so. Are these just supposed to like sit in the corner of your room? Like, I don't get this one. I'll be honest with you, because this isn't functional. This is just, I guess it's just decor. And you either like it or you don't. I guess the metal drifting in the breeze might be nice for you, but I think this one's a little bit stupid. So these are kind of like a little, you know, wind sails that are hung up on this weird thing and then you hang it in the corner of your room. I guess that's the idea of what they're trying to do here. I'm not a fan of this one. I'm not gonna lie to you. It just feels a little silly for me and definitely not my taste. And a little flimsy, like it just feels a little flimsy, you know. I don't like this one, this is a skip. But again, this is part of the same collection so it's got an interesting sort of cohesive color. So I guess if you committed to this color palette through the rest of the collection, why not throw some wind chime, wind mobile thing in the corner, I guess, that's the idea. Not a fan of this one myself. Okay, and then this is kind of the second half now where we're gonna talk about the Nitter, oh God, I have to read this one. Nitil Verkad, which apparently means like previous, well, Google Translate tells me, I did do some homework, you guys. It says something like it's like pre-manufactured or like, it's like retro. It's basically a re-release is what this is, basically. These are items that have actually come out from Ikea before, but they didn't sit in a warehouse for 50 years. They are re-releasing them. They're remanufacturing some of these old items. So I'm gonna also say like where they're from and like where the collection comes from, because I think it's really interesting. First up here is gonna be this sort of really bold sunflower pattern, which is from 1971. This is called the Sandertnel, Sandertnel, whatever. And you know, it's bright, it's sunny, it's, I mean, it's fun. I would say if you kind of ascribe to sort of color theory, this is sort of a bright, beautiful, cheery sort of color. Now, what's interesting is that yellow is actually my favorite color, but not necessarily for design. So to me, this is a little bold, but I can totally see why someone would love this. If you love big, bold color, then this one might make sense for you. The sunflowers are just gonna make you happy. They've also released the fabric, which I think is kind of cool. So people are getting really creative and you can do lots and lots of cool things. It also comes in an orange and people, you know, here on the website, they're showing some creative uses. I mean, look, we've got this, can I just say this, they've really given it away here, by the way, who this collection is for, because this is the most Gen Z looking guy I think I've ever seen in my entire life. He's got the mustache. He's got the blue colored whatever. He's sitting there with his like sunflowers that he's taken from the farmer's market. And he's got nail polish. Like, can we talk about the fact that like Ikea, like stuffy Ikea, like they don't take risks, you guys. Ikea doesn't take risks. They've released the same Billy bookshelf for 5,000 years. Like, I mean, they don't really take a bunch of risks, but to show a man with nail polish, on one of their ads is like, they're going hard in this direction. I think this is, you know, I think it's interesting. I think it's cool. Like go for it, like go nuts. And I just think like they've got this blue and orange pattern here that they're showing off, which blue and orange go really well together. They're complementary colors. So it makes tons of sense. You know, if you like big, bold, bright color and I then go for it. But I also love the fact that like by having the, the fabric, you can also do lots of different creative things with it. Like you can really have fun and play with it and make pillows out of it or make whatever you want out of it. Again, I'm not handy. You guys know that I can't really sew or do anything, but if you can, you know, go nuts. Okay, next up is the Honest Ad. This is from the 1972 collection. This is a really interesting sort of retro chair that they've got in this green and white pattern. It comes in sort of green metal legs as well as these sort of red legs here. Both are really cool. These are really retro and funky. And again, I think the theme of this part of the video, like this collection, is just how much color has just been taken away from design for the last 20, 30 years. I call it the Kim Kardashianification of design where it's just like everything becomes like really neutral and it's just like people only want to work with like white, gray or brown, maybe with a little bit of black, which 
again, is a vibe and go for it. If you like that, then go nuts. But like you realize in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you just saw so much more color. Like there was just so much more use of color. The fact that like Ikea released this in 1970 and like up until the last little like couple of years, they never would have released this. Like they never would have released this chair in, like, in 2018. Like it just would have sat on the shelves and it never would have happened. Just goes to show the changing trends, right? Like we're seeing so much more use of color. I think this is cool. It's a little interesting. I, I don't know how comfortable that chair is gonna be. I'm really skeptical of like metal chairs that have like cushions that are not attached because I just think you're gonna like slip right out of it. Like that chair is just gonna send you flying. I bought enough chairs to know that like, I feel like sometimes those things are just gonna slide right out of them. So I hope it's attached and fastened a little bit so that, you know, you have some grip so that you're not sitting there flying out of it. But overall, I think this is a cool one. Okay, next up we have the Bulleramsa. Okay, whatever, whatever that this one. The Bulleramsa, the Bulleramsa. She's a hot mess. Let's talk about this rug. I don't love this rug. This is from 1958 and it comes in a black, gray, and white, and like a blue, black, and white. I, is it, what, is this an animal print? Like what animal, what poor animal has this? I don't even know. I don't like this one. This one, I feel like in the 90s, you could have made do with this and it would have just, it would have been in a teenage boy's room. Like that's where this would have been. And as a person who was a teenage boy in the 90s, it totally would have been a rug that I would have had in my house. I don't like it. I just don't like this one. Plus it's a shag. Do you know how, oh, we've talked about the shag carpets. They're like great in theory, but then when you have one, oof. You take that outside and you give it a quick whack and you see what flies out of those shag rugs, you would be surprised. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of stuff that gets caught in that thing. I don't like this rug, I'll be honest with you. This is, in my opinion, the worst that we've seen so far. But as I always say, if you love it, put it in your home, but you know, you probably shouldn't. Okay, next up is the Scalboda, which is this chair. Oof, do, have we hit a new low? No, this one doesn't look bad, but I believe, so I actually, if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, what's wrong with you? Because I'm just as delightful over there and you can sign up in the link below called The Interior Scoop. And I actually covered this in the, fe I think I have a newsletter in like February where I covered this collection. And I believe I call this a cheese grater for your bum. And I still stand by that because this is not comfortable. This is not comfortable. I mean, no one wants to sit on like a metal rack. Like that's not fun. It's just gonna poke you in all the wrong places. This is not comfortable. Again, like maybe you might be able to throw a blanket over it or a pillow and then maybe it would be like somewhat usable. But for the most part, no, it's probably not going to be. I don't like this one. The colors are cool. It kind of looks like it could be neat, but it just looks uncomfortable. And I just find that like, if something looks uncomfortable or it looks impractical, it doesn't look beautiful. Like I think functional things are beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Because they're sort of built for human beings and not for people that, I don't know, this is a torture device. I wouldn't sit on this chair if you paid me. Well, maybe if you paid me, but I wouldn't sit on it for long. Okay, next up is the Jarlasa, and this is coming to us all the way from 1984. And this is a cute little card. It comes in white and it also comes in this really bright red color. Again, colorful. This is a fun bar cart in a world where I feel like a brass, a cheap brass bar cart has been the standard bar cart for several years now. It's fun to see something in sort of a nice, bright, bold color. I'm not necessarily above a, of a brass bar cart myself, but like, I think both are cool. And I think this one's kind of neat. You can use this in a bathroom. You could use this in a living room. This sort of, again, appeals to this retro sort of style where you've got just really big, bold, bright color. And again, use of that metal. I think it's really neat. I don't know, I think it's cute. I, I think it's a cart. And I think that uh, it will work for some people if you're looking for color. Okay, next up is gonna be the Div Linge. Now this one I have seen a billion times over on TikTok, especially in the green. It comes in black, it comes in green. This is from 1967, and this is the anti-stress chair, which it looks comfy. I'll be honest with you. This is miles better than the cheese grater that we saw a second ago. So this one is a hit for me. I think that the color green, Again, let's take a minute. How, they, I, they never would have released this back in 2017. They just would not have released this. It would have died a swift death. But it just goes to show how retro style is so huge right now in design. I'll be honest, the black one, I never really see anybody have. I only see this green one. You know, you let me know in the comment section if you have the black one because I only see people using the green one. Because again, if you like this retro style, you're probably looking for this big, fun, unapologetic color that's super trendy right now. The green one is everywhere. Do I like it? Yeah, it looks pretty comfy. It looks pretty casual. It looks, yeah, I think it's fine. It's a cute little swivel chair. And apparently anti-stress, which, ooh, here it's shown with that awful rug again, which to me is stressful. So I would need the chair after looking at that rug. Okay. Okay, next up is the Sotenas, which comes to us from 1969. This one is cute. 
it's low to the ground, let's be honest. It looks not easy for a person over the age of 60 to get in and out of. So this is not the chair that you put grandma in when she comes to visit your apartment, okay? This is not the chair for her. You need to get her like a Louis chair because that is upright and firm and she'll be fine. You put her in this, she ain't ever getting out of it. She ain't never leaving your apartment. This is in a very, very, what would I call this? Highlighter yellow? We're gonna call it highlighter yellow. Again, I love yellow as a color. Don't always really love it in interior design, but I will say that that it's cool if you like color. IKEA's gone nuts, you guys. Like the use of color here, I just, I feel vindicated though, if I may pat myself on the back for a second, because again, I've talked so much about how color and postmodern design is like where these trends are going. Like remember the video I did that was like uh, five styles that are out and four that are in or something like that. And this was one of them. And people were like, mm, is it really in? Yes, yes it is. Look, even Ikea, even Ikea has a bright yellow chair. Ikea, design is changing, my friends. Okay, now we have the Domston. Ooh, I told you to get that drink. I hope you did because we still got a long way to go here. 1973, this stool came out. This is in sort of some pastel -y colors. You know, again, I don't love this pastel. Why, you know, we started, it was all fun and games. I didn't like them, but they were still people having fun with the plastic, you know, purple pastel crates that people had in their, you know, that teenagers had in their rooms. And that was fine, we give them that one. But now it's just been taken too far. Now we've got actual furniture, you know, made out of this pastel color. Uh, I don't know if I'm a big fan of these, but I mean, you know, I don't like the purple, but I, I appreciate that there's this combination of of like this really pale neutral wood with a color because so much of what we've seen in this collection is just color or just wood. And again, as a lover of natural materials, it is refreshing to see them kind of combined together in an interesting way. So this is a cool stool. I don't like the pastel because I just don't really love pastels, but I think that uh, it's a cool little cool little stool. Okay, next we have the Bagboda, which I did feature in my newsletter because this is from 1971. And I believe Paige Wassel has this in her home if you love her channel. Hi, Paige. She's great, lovely. This one, I think she has it in the white and the chrome, but it also comes in a yellow. Boom, highlighter yellow. Hits you right in the face, doesn't it? So highlighter yellow, you know, to go with your chair, I guess that you have earlier if you're really committed to the yellow. This also, by the way, I think it's really important to note, feeds into another sort of trend that we've seen is chrome. Chrome has been trending and you're seeing a lot more chrome, a lot more silver. Again, it's not my favorite metal choice myself, but I think because it, isn't brass or it isn't black. I think it does work really well with these big bold colors that we're seeing. You know, you couldn't have really worked brass into this with a highlighter yellow. You know, it just wouldn't have worked. Maybe could have done it with black, but I just think chrome does work really well to sort of balance out some of these big bold colors. And so you are seeing a lot more chrome being used in design. And again, chrome is a very retro material. It's been used for a very long time. You know, you've seen chrome all throughout the different decades. And so I think because it was so popular in decades past, it makes sense that it's having a resurgence now. So this is a cool little coffee table. It's funky, it's fun. Go have fun with this one. Okay, so like closing thoughts just on this collection. I think it's bold, it's unapologetic color. It's now, I think clearly Ikea knows that if you're between the ages of 14 and 25, this is the type of style that you really like. And they know that they need to capture that audience. That's not to say they're gonna ignore people over the age of 25. I don't think that's true. If you, most of Ikea stuff still very much fits into a category of what, you know, people old for the age of 25 are really looking for. But this is clearly their attempt at tapping in to that sort of postmodern Gen Z crazy, uh, kooky, big, bold, fun color maximalism. Like this is, clearly their shot at that. They're also leaning into something that I think is really smart, which is that they have this collection of so much stuff from, you know, the 60s and 70s. They've been around for so long that taking some of those styles that were super popular in the past, reissuing them for today is really smart because it just, it feeds into, you know, they, they're, they're recognizing that people are going out of their way to get dupes of the Togo sofa or the Bellini sofa or whatever. And they're saying, hey, look, we've got some iconic pieces too from decades past. Why not reissue them? and take advantage of this moment where some of those, you know, 1970s pieces are coming back into fashion. Why not do it and have a little bit of fun with it and yeah, make some money on it. They're also doing a really good job, I think, of just establishing themselves in the mindshare of that younger audience because eventually, you know, the 23 year olds of today, they're gonna be the 33 year olds pretty soon and they're going to be, you know, making up a huge chunk of the market, even bigger than they are right now. And they're gonna be buying a lot of furniture as they move through their lives, right? So I think it's really interesting that they're trying to tap into that market and really appeal to that, uh, that demographic. So 
overall in design, you know, are all these pieces my favorite? No, it's not necessarily my style, but I still think it's really cool. And I think it's interesting they're taking some risks because I think in a previous video, I've even said like, Ikea was starting to feel a bit samey samey, not with this collection, you know, starting to feel really bold and fun. So that's it for me for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I will see you all in the next one. Go shop at Ikea. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye.